Hello, and welcome to Grade 8 Parent Information Session. This is in place of the Grade 8 Parent Night if you were unable to attend or to supplement the information that was shared on that evening. As you can see, Brooklyn High School has changed a lot over the years, and we're so excited to welcome your children to be future bears. Now more than ever, communication is incredibly important. A lot of our information is shared on our website, our Instagram, it's shared via our Grade Counselor Reminds, we have a school info app, and we use Twitter. It is imperative, especially now, given the situation with COVID and information sharing, that you have access to all of these communication points. There isn't a question that can't be answered without going to our website first. We're also incredibly happy to assist you with any question you might have, but a good question finds its way to a website always so that we can make sure that you have the information that you need. The School Info app is a tool that synthesizes all of the information that we have at our school, all of the notifications, all of the announcements, all of the Twitter. So this is a great app that you can use. If you use your camera feature right now, you can hover over the QR code and it will open the app on your phone. I, you might want to turn the notifications off as you might get a lot during the day for this, but it is a great app that synthesizes all of the information that we have happening at Brooklyn High School. We don't do morning announcements. We use our Twitter and our other platforms to share information. Now for the Brooklyn High School guidance presentation. We hope after this presentation, you will have a better sense of what high school looks like, how your children will pick their courses, how to pick a pathway for grade nine, and learn about all the ways we can support them in achieving their goals. So what does high school actually look like? Well, our school is modeled after Donald A. Wilson and Maxwell Heights Secondary School. We are the newest school in the Durham District School Board, and we have a beautiful facility that we hope to show all of you one day. High school looks a little different than it might have looked when you were in high school. We have a very active guidance department. Our guidance department consists of four counselors. Each counselor is assigned to a grade, and you see that smiling gentleman in the bottom corner. That's Mr. Knowles. He's going to be your counselor next year, and he will be your child's counselor and your point of contact over the next four years. He'll follow your child from grade nine to graduation. He'll take care of their academic, emotional, and social well being while they're at our school. If you think about it, your child could potentially have 30 teachers in their high school career, and they will always have one guidance counselor. That's why it's incredibly important for them to connect with Mr. Knowles and to have that point of contact so that you don't have 30 people to deal with, you just have one. Mr. Knowles will also have a grade nine Google Classroom and a grade nine specific remind, and that way the kids can communicate with him and receive all the information that they need to Mr. Howlett is the current grade nine counselor. I, Ms. Morgan Cook, am the current grade 10 counselor, and Ms. Schossenberg is the current grade 11 counselor. And you do not want to know how many times we have each graduated high school. What will their day actually look like? It's a great question. The board and the ministry are still deciding what the actual start time and end time of the school will look like. At this moment in time, we are assuming that semesters are in place. So that will be four periods, 75 minutes in length, with a 45-minute lunch. We will let you know as we find out the information what the start time and end time of the day is so that you can plan around that. Please make sure you're on our communication points as well So that's because that's how we will be sharing the information with you. High school is different from elementary because they earn credits and they only have four credits or four courses in a semester and they will get eight by the end of the year. A semester runs from September to January and fe February to the end of June. Often students really like having semesters because they have four credits, four different teachers, four different groups of kids in their class, and by the end of the semester, they say goodbye and move on to a different semester, and they often like that. It's easier to manage than perhaps a rotary system of grade eight. High school is also different because instead of choosing all being in the same class and the same level and just working at different points, they actually get to choose different levels or pathways from the beginning. 
locally developed, applied, and academic are the pathways that they will be choosing when they choose their classes. To graduate, I know we just got your children in the building almost, and now we're talking about getting them out, but it's important to know what you have to have to graduate. 30 credits are required. Remember, each course is a credit. 18 of those are compulsory. And with our programming, they will get eight of these in their grade nine year, and 12 are optional. They also require 40 hours of community involvement. And your child can start those the summer of grade nine. So in July 2021, if it is safe to do so, they are welcome to start their community involvement hours. Just make sure that they record them and more information will come from that from their grade eight teacher before the end of the school year. Children in grade 10 also have to pass a literacy requirement and not to worry, we, they will get lots of support and so will you. And the ministry has introduced that children now in this coming grade nine year will have to have two credits in e-learning. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information about that right now, more information to follow. And as we get information, like with the start time and other things that are still uncertain for next year, we will absolutely let you know. Just an update for DDSB at home, you may or may not know that the Durham District School Board had a virtual only school this year. That school will not exist after this school year. Instead, Brooklyn High School will offer its own virtual synchronous instruction program online only. Every high school in the DDSB is offering this program and they're offering very similar programming options. So if your child chooses to be online only next year, they will just choose from a different group of classes other than the face-to-face. So you do have to make that choice. You are committing to one mode of learning for the school year. I know it's an odd decision to make in February as to what you'll do in September, but you do have to decide now. I'm not certain how flexible that choice is going to be. So really please put a lot of thought into the decision that you're making. There might also be a potential for course sharing, even though we are offering the online programming through Brooklyn High School. If we don't have enough spots or if we have extra spaces, there's potential that kids from other schools could be in those classes or that your child will be in another class at a different DDSB high school. If you are choosing online only when you're choosing courses, you're going to choose the courses that have the sixth digit of N. If your child's currently at DDSB at home, and I know we have a number of students in that situation, they will simply choose their courses for Brooklyn High School using My Blueprint. They should see Brooklyn High School on their My Blueprint program, and there shouldn't be any issues with that. So I know it's early to make this decision, but you do have to have that discussion with your child and decide if they're going to be face-to-face in person or online only. There is not a combination. So how do you make an informed decision? Well, the DDSB believes that all students can be successful and that there's many pathways to success. We know that there's many different ways to get to your destination and rarely does that destination follow a straight line, often has many twists and turns. Sometimes there's obstacles and boundaries and and the, the road might take a different path, but there are many ways to be successful and to achieve your goals. The DDSB uses evidence-based information to inform decisions. They use like to use EQAO scores and their grade eight marks and uh, their learning skills to decide whether they're going to be successful in academic, applied, or locally developed in high school. Their idea is that all grade eight should have the opportunity to learn about strengths and interests while investigating. And that's why they've set up a Choosing My Success program for students. Part of that program is this guide for parents and families, and this year all of these documents are online only. So the DDSB has these documents posted under their student success. I will also post a separate presentation that has hyperlinks in it as well without the narration. This is the Choosing My Success document that the DDSB students will have access to, and actually anyone can access it. They just have to go onto the DDSB website. In the document, it talks about how to focus your career life planning process. And these are the guiding questions that we use as guidance counselors to help your child discover what their goals are or what their potential pathways could be. We like to look at what their opportunities are, talk about who they are in terms of their learning skills, their learning styles, 
um, what their goals might be, what is the plan to achieve their goals, and who do you want to become. There's many options for what do you want to become, but it's nice to think about who do you want to become and have that inform the decision. At some point in your child's high school career, we would like their strengths, their interests, and their um, goals to align. And that focuses on the who do you want to become. This course planning tool is used for that evidence-based decision-making. If you don't have access to the DDSB um, tool because you're not a DDSB student right now, that's okay. You can simply download the Choosing My Success document, and this page is in there, and you can fill in the spots that you need to fill in with your child's information from their EQAO scores and their grade seven and eight report cards. And you can have a picture of what this will look like. If you are a DDSB student, this will come pre-populated to your child before the course selection opens. And these are the guides that are available to parents all throughout their child's pathway in high school to support each grade level and beyond in making decisions for their child's success. So the Choosing My Success program is really about reading the document, discussing the career life planning process, reviewing the pre-populated or you populated course planning tool, talking about the reflection questions and selecting courses in my blueprint. The students will most be mostly be focused on selecting courses in my blueprint. So we'll talk about that. So how do you choose your classes? So the Classes are all located on My Blueprint. In the past, we've used Career Cruising. This year, the Durham District School Board switched over to My Blueprint. It's a very easy student login. They just go to the school account login and enter their DDSB credentials. Once they're in there, they add courses to a high school plan, review course selections, submit and send approval email. That approval email will come to you, whoever's address they put in, in that step, and then you simply approve the email back. Then the school's admin and teacher approves the course selections. There is an option to print a signed copy of the form. Brooklyn High School is not taking any of those. We are paperless. So if your elementary school is taking them, they might have a bit of a different procedure. Just check in with your grade eight teacher. And again, this is only for current DDSB students. Once the course selection process opens up on February 16th, this is the banner that you will see at the top of your My Blueprint. Things to consider. So children are going to be choosing a pathway. They're going to be choosing different leveled courses. And often this is probably the most important decision that they make entering high school. They are able to move from applied courses in grade 9 to academic courses in grade 10. And math has been de-streamed for the 2021-2022 school year. Previously, math was offered at academic, applied, and locally developed. And the children had to have that level to move on to the following level of similar uh, level in grade 10. The government has decided to de-stream math. So much like grade 8 will be one math class. There is still the locally developed option for children if they are missing gaps from grade 8 in math, but there is no option for academic or applied. It is just one level. So every child has the potential to move to academic or applied in grade 10, regardless of the courses that they took in grade 9. Unless they're at the locally developed level, then that's a bit of a different conversation. They would move to applied classes depending if they're ready and the gaps have been closed in their learning. Conversely, students are able to move from academic courses to in grade nine to applied courses in grade 10. And not every course has to be at the same level. We all have different strengths and we all have different interests. Please keep that in mind when choosing pathways. However, simply because your child doesn't like a subject doesn't mean they should choose a different level in it. If they don't love French, for example, that doesn't mean that they should take academic everything else and French applied. The choice of the level they make is really dependent on their learning styles and their learning skills and what they need to learn and how they need to learn, not if they like or dislike the curriculum. Please choose carefully. I know we tell our students that it is not about them, but this time it really is about them. We do create the timetable based on what they choose. Availability of programs is limited based on what they choose. So if we have all academic English and no applied, then I and your child is struggling, it's impossible for us to move them to an applied program if they don't, if children haven't selected that option as well. 
Course selection reminders. Once you hit submit, you can't make any changes. There is no rush to submit. It opens February 16th, but if you submit February 16th at 9.02 a.m., you are not guaranteed the courses rather than over a child that submits March 3rd at 9 a.m. That is not, it's not based on when you hit the submit button. But once you hit the submit button, you can't make changes. So if you do hit submit and you do have a problem, you're going to have to ask your grade 8 teacher to unlock your classes. Be sure before you submit, remember, no one is guaranteed over when they submit, faster or later, it doesn't matter. Make sure you consult with your teachers, your cert, and your family. And again, course selection opens on the 16th and closes on March 3rd. What are the different pathway options? Again, as I mentioned, there's locally developed, applied, and academic. And what do those mean? Well, first of all, when you're decoding a course code, which is the language I speak, the level is signified in that fifth digit. D is academic, P is applied, L is locally developed, and O is open. Many of our programs in grade nine are open, meaning there is no level for them, that it, any level child can take that class. And then the sixth digit is one for regular day or N for online instruction only. So the difference between locally developed, applied, and academic Locally developed targets gaps that perhaps are missing from grade eight. If your child has an IEP or if any of their curriculum is being modified and they're working below grade level, then locally developed in that subject area is probably where they should start. In the locally developed program, they make sure that they emphasize basic concepts and fill those gaps. And there is the potential to upgrade to applied. The applied programming has more hands-on practical examples, teacher-directed, step-by-step, Um, instructions. There is potential to upgrade to academic. And many programs for university do not require academic or university level math. So if math is something that you struggle in, in grade 10, perhaps you should choose applied based on what your pathway is, but know that that does not limit you to going to university. Academic covers core concepts, more global examples, more independent, student-initiated and student-directed learning. And they cover larger amounts of material at a faster pace. This is a visual a visual that we like to use from the Durham District School Board, thinking of where does your child fall on this continuum in terms of academic, applied, and locally developed. And again, you don't need to be the same level in every class. When you make appropriate pathway choices, it means you get more engaged students who look forward to going to class, have a sense of accomplishment, they feel challenged but not overwhelmed, they have a feeling of self-confidence and self-esteem. The goal is for your child to work as hard as they can work and be as successful as they want to be. And this isn't a, it's a time for you to have a conversation with your child about their marks in grade eight. And did they get that mark in the class because they didn't understand the material or because they didn't try? And that's a big difference. You need to have those honest conversations with your child about what the expectations are for high school and how their learning skills are going to have to um, improve potentially for high school, or maybe they choose different pathways based on their learning styles. It's just really important to have those honest conversations so that you can ensure that your child is set up for success in high school. They are engaged, they'll be successful, and they will be happy. And a lot of that has to do with the pathway choice that they choose in the beginning. But remember, the timetable is organic. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing is... um, closed for discussion. It's just really important that you make a good choice to start so that we make sure we have the programming that you need. In grade nine, six classes are compulsory, English, math, geo, French, science, and gym. If you have an IEP and that French seems to trigger something for you, don't worry. It's your IPRC review that will be discussed. We do offer a learning strategies program for students that have an identification And sometimes those students are moved from the French program, but that is based on an IEP, IPRC review, and we have limited spaces in those programming. So it's really important during the IPRC review process that you mention that to the CERT and the grade nine CERT that comes from Brooklyn High School. These are the in-person compulsory subjects that we offer. You see that we offer a variety of different levels and several different choices for 
gym for females. They have a sport-based or a dance-based. Both have fitness testing, so you're not getting away from that beep test. They just focus on different things. Uh, In the rhythm and movement, there is an expectation that there will be some sort of a group dance presentation, but there is no expectation that your child has any dance experience whatsoever. It's just a dance movement-based class rather than a sport-based class. And for those that identify as boys, the Healthy Active Living Activity Gym for is just sport-based. Online only students, if that's the path that you're taking for grade nine, have a more limited pathway options. There's only one geography and there's only one gym and it is co-ed. For grade nine, there's two optional classes and we offer visual arts drama, music for creating and a business tech. And you must choose two out of those and one alternate in case you don't get your electives. So you choose two of drama, instrumental music, visual arts, music for creating, or business and computer studies with technology. That business course and tech course are combined. They are two nine-week courses that run over a semester and students switch after the first part of the semester into the other class. Um, It is good to get those essential skills for high school. So we highly recommend you take that one in addition to one of the arts, and then you choose another class as an alternate. Drama is just that. Instrumental music does require you to have some sort of understanding of instrumental music. Visual arts uses different mediums to create. And music for creating percussion digital music really is for those students that have had no musical background in elementary school and have an interest in music. It is. It requires some uh, computer skills to create digital music, which they'll teach you about, and then they teach you about percussion. These are the choices for electives for online-only students. As you see, it is a less fulsome program. This They have to choose visual arts, business and computer studies, or exploring technologies. Those are not combined in this program. So those are the three electives they get to choose from. So they choose two from those and one backup. And remember, you cannot choose a combination. So if you wanted to be an online-only student but wanted to do drama, that is not an option to you. How do you get support? What if you need help? Well, that's what we're here for. Guidance counselors are your main contact. In addition to your subject teachers, the special education department is there to support our students with IEPs. We have tutors, after school help. Our SLAM program is our grade nine leadership program where grade 11 and 12 students join a grade nine classroom once a week. You'll have the same leader for the whole semester and you make connections with them and they do some community building with you and you can ask them any question that you have about high school and they're a great reference point for you. There's also literacy and numeracy based support programs to support EQAO grade nine math testing and EQAO grade 10 literacy testing as well. Our academic resource department is uh, an amazing department that supports our students with IEPs. Their certs are the ones that will do the IEP updates and reviews, not the classroom teachers. So that's different from elementary school. The certs attend the IPRC reviews for grade eight, so you'll see them then. They're available throughout the day for course-specific support. There is safe space as guidance is as well. And they can, students can write tests there. They can get some support in their classwork if they're struggling. They work with students from grade eight to nine, nine to 12, and they transition students beyond grade 12. They always make sure there's a transition plan in place for those students that are leaving high school. Things that are coming up. We would love to host you in our school. I'm just not certain if that's going to happen this year. If it does, awesome. We will be in touch. If it doesn't, we will have a virtual tour for you. So stay tuned and please make sure you check the communication points. What if you're not at Brooklyn High School? We often have uh, the three schools in our area that are not part of our board. We often get 60 to 90 students from those schools registering with us. So if you're not at a Brooklyn High School or perhaps you are moving into the area, this is how you would register. So for our current DDSB students that are in our family of home of schools, they just complete their course selections using my blueprint. It opens February 16th and closes March 3rd. If you are at Pringle Creek or Meadowcrest in one of the specialized programs, but live in Brooklyn, you would have to tell your grade eight teacher that you're planning on leaving that program and coming to Brooklyn High School and they will change your next school indicator so that you see Brooklyn High School in your course planner in my blueprint. And then you'll just proceed to to choose your classes in my blueprint. If you're not part of our family of schools, meaning you're moving into the area, 
you didn't attend a DDSB school currently, or you are were at a DDSB school, left to go to a different school, and are looking to move back to the DDSB, you have to fill in a registration, a new student online registration for the 2021-2022 school year. Once you register, in the next few weeks, someone will be in touch with you about your documentation, and then guidance will email you a Google form so you can choose classes. Don't worry, you are not going to be at any disadvantage because you don't have a course selection in by February 16th. All op- all course selections, DDSB students and non-DDSB students are considered with equal consideration. There is no disadvantage to submitting your course selections after that March 3rd deadline. That is not the deadline for our non-DDSB family of school, non-DDSB students, pardon me. To access the non-DDSB registration process, there is a registration PowerPoint on our website under guidance. That's a really good spot for reference for any guidance question that you may have. You just create an account on the student registration and enter your information. Once it's submitted, again, someone will be in touch with you for document verification. You do have to live in our area to attend our school. And after the verification, someone from the guidance department will reach out to you about choosing your classes. And again, don't worry, it will happen. Just trust the process. Just want to thank you so much. We really do look forward to meeting our future bears. I can't say enough about Brooklyn High School. I'm incredibly proud to work here. I'm incredibly proud to represent the community and to connect with the community. And we are so excited to meet our future bears. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day.